nano uh, approaches for control of malaria, dengue, and chagas. As you know, this conference really aims to bring leading edge technologies to the benefit of our patients, and the majority of the patients worldwide does not live in uh, our countries. And this is one of the reasons why each year we organize a session in our conference which tries to uh, take such uh, leading edge uh, advances and try to fit them to real challenges of, the, you know, of a global scope. And in this context, I'm very happy that we have a series of uh, uh, speakers who are very welcome, who are profoundly uh, knowledgeable in the field and who are very committed in their life to, uh, to these important aspects of healthcare. The first is uh, Professor Reto Brun. He's the head of parasite chemotherapy at the Swiss Tropical and Public Health Institute in Basel, and he will talk about neglected diseases, new drugs, and diagnostic through public-private partnerships. <laughs> okay. Yeah, good, good afternoon, everybody. I will give you in my presentation an overview on the neglected tropical diseases, sort of to set the scene. So what you see on this uh, photograph uh, in the background of uh, this uh, slide is a scene which could be taken anywhere in Africa. You see on the right a health post, on the left you see some uh, human settlements Unfortunately, there is no doctor, unfortunately, there is no nurse, there are no drugs closed. So this sort of reflects the situation of neglected diseases. The World Health Organization uh, classified 17 diseases as neglected tropical diseases, and they will, I will show you them uh, to you in, in a moment. But what is causing these uh, diseases? Uh, we have four categories of pathogens. Uh, first, we have the unicellular protozoans. Among them, we find, for instance, uh, pathogens causing malaria or African sleeping sickness. Then we have uh, helminths, worms. Here we have uh, a whole array of, of very serious diseases like schistomiasis or filariasis. Then, of course, we also have bacteria. Here to mention the lep leprosy and Burruli ulcer. And finally, there are also viruses. Um, yeah, one could mention the dengue fever. The numbers are impressive. Uh, 1.4 billion people are affected worldwide. And of course, the economic causes are enormous. I would like to give you one example of such a neglected tropical disease. And this is African sleeping sickness. The disease is restricted to Africa. It is caused by the protozoan parasite Trypanosoma brucei, and it's transmitted by tsetse flies. Today, the number of patients is rather low. We talk about about 20,000 people, but you have to remember there were times when we had hundreds of thousands of patients and by that time there was no cure. And even today we, we have to deal with old drugs which have lots of liabilities. Uh, when we look at the geographical distribution of these neglected diseases, then you see that uh, there is a focus, a focus on, on Africa, but also on South America and on Asia. And you have to realize that most of these countries do not only have one or two of these diseases, but they have several. They can have up to ten. And uh, this, is re this is reflected by the darkness of the colors. The darker, the more of these diseases you have. And so it's quite clear that, that uh, the, center, the center of Africa is really uh, the worst part for these type of diseases. Now, what is the drug situation? We are still using old drugs today. The number of drugs for uh, each disease is limited. Uh, there is low efficacy of some of, of the medications, and of course, there are also resistance problems which render 
a medication uh, useless. And we also have to consider the cost of some of the products and the availability. Uh, why is this so? Well, during the last 40 years, one could say the pharmaceutical industry was not investing much in uh, drug R&D for neglected diseases. Of course, based on a lack of uh, return of investment. But then, fortunately, by the change of the millennium there, something was happening from different sectors and uh, new initiatives were founded, so-called public-private partnerships, also called product development partnerships, with the goal to, to come up with new drugs, new vaccines and new diagnostics for these diseases. And what you see here, these are the logo just of, of a few selected uh, initiatives. Today there must be between 30 and 40 of these initiatives for diagnostics, drugs and vaccines for these, these diseases. I would like to, to introduce two of them a bit, in a bit more detail. The first one is the Medicines for Malaria Venture called MMV. It was one of the first. It was founded in the year 2000 in Geneva with the goal to develop new drugs for malaria. Today, MMV has the largest drug pipeline for malaria ever and is a very successful organization. I also listed where the, the funding is, is coming from. A second initiative uh, was founded three years later also in Geneva. It's called the Drugs for Neglected Diseases Initiative. It is somehow similar, but also different. It has a, a focus on different diseases, on sleeping, African sleeping sickness, Chagas disease, Leishmaniasis, also filariasis. Uh, it has a healthy pipeline. There are several projects are in the clinical phase, and this institution already put five or six new products on the market. So this is an extreme good, good uh, example of such a new initiative. All the drugs for neglected tropical diseases are today donated. I listed here just a few, and you see the diseases and you see the companies donating the drugs, all the drugs needed. And on the right side, you see the figures, the doses per year. And of course, this depends very much on the number of patients. And for, for some of the diseases, especially the, the helminth diseases, these numbers are enormous. Hundreds of millions of uh, tablets which are being given for, for free. Now, uh, it was one and a half years ago in London a declaration was being signed. This was under the leadership of the uh, World Health Organization, together with major drug companies, together with major players in, in the health field, with countries affected by these diseases and also by, by the biggest uh, philanthropic organizations. And they they define the goal that by, by the year 2020, they want to eliminate five of these neglected diseases and they want to put five others under control. This is an extremely ambitious goal, but it is, it is somehow realistic, one must say. But we have, to, we have to consider, sorry, you have to consider this turquoise uh, part of the bars and this is what is still needed to reach this goal. New tools and strategies are being needed, otherwise this goal cannot be reached. And by that we mainly mean diagnostics, better diagnostics and better drugs. So today I told you drug donations are completely by pharmaceutical companies, but in the, in the near future uh, Drugs should be on the market, but they should be there at an affordable price. This will end up in a much better sustainability. And for the elimination of these terrible diseases, it needs 
many things, but it needs, in the first place, political will, and then significant funding. And uh, on the technical side, it needs better point-of-care diagnostics, together with new, effective, safe, and affordable drugs and vaccines. And of course, one can say, where is, where is nanomedicine? Well, nanomedicine, there is enough room for nanomedicines. And I see especially a, a great chance, I see for parasites which are in specific host cells, so where we need drugs that can be targeted, or infections which are in, uh, in certain organs, like the brain in, uh, in African sleeping sickness. And with this and within the time, I would like to, to uh, end my presentation. Thank you very much.